we should probably record inside today then. Um, how about we use a whiteboard? Go back to the VR whiteboard, I think. Do some drawings. Okay then, so the purpose of this video is when you're looking at the back of the eye, so if you've got an op ophthalmoscope and you're looking through the pupil at the fundus of the eye, that's what the back of the eye gets called, so you're looking at the retina, there are a number of features that if you can easily identify them, you can consider the health of the eye, the health of the retina. Now nobody ever lets me do this, nobody ever lets me look with ophthalmoscopes into people's eyes. Maybe they would if I asked nicely, I don't know. Anyway, because I'm just an anatomist, right? I'm not an ophthalmologist. <laughs> but many of you studying anatomy, this is the sort of thing you need to know. So we're going to look at the back of the retina and we're going to identify the optic disc, the macula, the fovea, um, and that's pretty much it. It's a terminology thing, right? Annabelle sat here doing her homework. <laughs> so <laughs> she's doing medieval plague history stuff. <laughs> We're doing the eye. So first things first then, what is the retina? Um, if you look at the retina like histologically, you'll see lots and lots of lots of layers of cells. And you're probably aware that the retina detects light and those light detecting cells are modified neurons that can detect different wavelengths of light and that sort of thing. They're photosensitive cells and relay that information back to the brain. But the organization, the layers are a little bit backwards in that the layer of the retina that the light hits is actually there's a series of um, like there's a supportive layer, then a series of ganglion layers, a series of um, support cell layers and the rods and the cones, the actual photosensitive cells, are in the deeper layers of the retina and then they're up against a layer of pigmented epithelium and that's what gives the retina its colour when you're looking at it with an ophthalmoscope. That and the blood vessels running through it because it's well perfused with blood so it looks pretty red, right? So that pigmented epithelium is um, it's absorbing scattered light which helps the mechanism of the eye work um, and it has a whole bunch of other protective functions but it's kind of like if you look at a projector screen you know how you've got like the white bit that you want to project your image on then you've got the black bit around the outside and when you project your image onto the projector well nothing projects onto the black bit because it absorbs all that extra light so it looks like you've got a really nice rectangular image that's kind of what the pigmented epithelium layer does it absorbs that scattered light Anyway, the nuts and bolts of the retina are, of course, the rods and the cones, which are the major um, photosensitive cells, rods and cones. I always get these the wrong way around, but cones are um, cells that need quite a lot of light, and there are different types of cones that are sensitive to different wavelengths of light. So the cones then are responsible for seeing colour. Um, the cones are also the ones we tend to see in the central retina, which is something we're going to talk about. So they're involved in like high def vision, high definition, high acuity vision when you're looking for uh, details. Um, rods are um, rods are more sensitive to light, as in they work better in low levels of light. They're found more in the peripheral retina and they're not involved so much in seeing colour. There is a third type of photoreceptive cell called IPRGCs. I'm not going to expand that, it's really, really long term. There aren't very many of them, um, it's a bit of a specialist subject. We tend to talk about rods and cones but there are other photoreceptors in, in the retina. Okay, so that's the general um, how the retina works. We have photosensitive neurons and then we need to send that information from the retina back to the brain. Which cranial nerve carries um, that information from the retina to the brain? <laughs> it's cranial nerve two, the optic nerve, right? Now, Here's the thing, so the optic nerve, um, it's a pretty big nerve. So whenever we have really sensitive parts of the body, 
we have more neurons. We have like a higher density of neurons, which is what gives you that increased sensitivity. If you have more neurons, then when you pack them together to make a nerve, you have a bigger nerve. So the optic nerve is pretty big. Um, now, if we, okay, so let's look at the back of the retina. Let's look at the fundus of the eye. We'll draw a circle. So that's the, that's like the, the roundish retina that we can see. And if you look, and it's either going to be to the left side or the right side, depending upon which eye you're looking at and which way the person's looking and that sort of thing. But there will be a clearly-ish defined circle with lots of blood vessels coming out of it. Now, given the anatomy of the eye that we've been talking about in recent weeks, what is that? Well, that is the optic disc, also known as the blind spot, because that circle that you're seeing there is, is essentially all those neurons coming together to form the optic nerve, and that's the point at which it's leaving the retina and going back out through the optic canal. Okay, so it's called the blind spot because there aren't any photoreceptive cells there, because there's optic nerve there. Remember how we said that the, uh, the support cells and the ganglion cells were closer to the to where the light comes into the retina and the photoreceptive cells were deeper. Well, if it's the optic nerve that's deeper, you can't have any photoreceptive cells there. That's why it's called the blind spot. But it's not something we notice in normal vision, but it's, you know, it structurally, it doesn't have a photosensitive area there. Now you'll see that really easily because you'll see the blood vessels coming out of it. Now the blood vessel that's running with the optic nerve is the central retinal artery. Um, and the central retinal vein drains back through there. So what we can see is the central retinal artery entering the retina here and then branching out straight away. And all those branches running out from the optic disc and running around the retina to supply the retina with blood and branches and branches and branches. So that's how you're going to recognize the optic disc easily on an ophthalmoscope image. So the optic disc also gets called the optic papilla. Okay, so that's the most obvious feature, I think. So you recognize that first, and that's to, usually to one side of the image, to one side of the retina. Now, towards the other side of the retina, you may or may not see another kind of oval spot. Um, but you will probably see an area that doesn't have very many blood vessels. That is the macula, or macula lutea. So in the pigment epithelium there, ooh, um, so if you shine light into the eye and then look at the retina with an ophthalmoscope, the macula will appear yellow if you don't include any red light in the light that you're shining into the eye. Does that make sense? So this area is more pigmented, so it looks like a yellow spot, macula lutea, that's Latin, right? Literally uh, spot yellow. Yellow, so it's the yellow spot. Now the macula is really, really important. This is the bit that you're actually looking at me with, or if you're taking notes, that's what you're looking at your notes with. This is the reason our eyes and head and neck move together so well. It's because of the macula. The macula is the, is, is the region of the retina which has high acuity vision, right? This is where photosensitive cells are packed together with optimal efficiency. So you've got the highest density of photoreceptive cells. And in this case, you've got a really high density of cone cells, those high acuity cells that, that see color packed together. And that is the bit that we actually see the world with. That's the bit that you, you can see detail with, that you can read with, that you can recognize bits of people's faces with. And our brain, and the muscles of our eye, the extraocular muscles, move the eye around so that actually we focus that high definition vision part of our eye on the different bits of the world and then our brain builds up a picture of the world. My favourite example of this is always people's faces. You think you just look at somebody's face, but if you pay attention, you don't. You look at eyes, mouth, eyes, mouth, eyes, mouth, brow, nose, chin, you move your eyes around the face as you're talking to that person and you'll do it in a different way to somebody you've just met, um, to somebody that you know very well. 
and these are saccadic eye movements. So the macula is really important for seeing. This is what we mean by our central vision. And I guess the more um, ophthalmoscope images you look at, the better you'll get at recognising where the optic disc is and where the macula is. And those are your two major landmarks. So the macula is incredibly important. And that's why it has um, that extra layer of um, pigment. It's, it's a protective thing, you know. Um, and in medicine, then, we consider the macula quite a bit. Well, I'll come back to that later. Right, so the other word that you might have heard associated with, you might kind of hear associated with that same reason, it sounds confusing, there are lots of different names meaning the same thing, is fovea, or fovea centralis. Now, fovea is Latin for pit. It's kind of like a, you know, like a small, shallow, fairly steepish pit, I think. And in the macula, then, you have that high density of, um, photoreceptive cells but there's also in the central part so the macula is like the bigger bit um, in the center of the macula then you have the fovea or fovea centralis which is this central pit so they do both refer to the same region but slightly different bits of the same region the fovea being a, a more central bit you know a bit within the macula so that's the fovea or the fovea centralis and the fovea centralis um, should have almost no major large blood vessels. We're obviously not working at a very large scale here, but there shouldn't be any large blood vessels there. There's pretty much an absence of, of capillaries. So there we go. That's optic disc, macular fovea. Good. Now, age-related macular degeneration. Age-related macular degeneration is, is a leading cause of the loss of vision, um, certainly in people over 50 worldwide. So there are other causes of macular degeneration and other forms of macular degeneration, but this age-related one is a big issue. Um, okay, so what do you think will happen? What will the person experience with macular degeneration? Well, if we think about what the macula does and where it is, um, and of course there's one in each eye, so if it's only happening on one side, there's going to be a very slow gradual development of, of kind of, of a blurriness of vision in the one side that will probably be compensated for by the other eye. And like many slow degenerative diseases in the eye, the person adapts and copes with it and doesn't really notice these changes until either they become quite pronounced and they, it causes them difficulties in parts of their life or it gets recognised by an ophthalmologist. Um, so what happens is you've got your photoreceptive cell layer and you've got your epithelial cell layer and we get fluid leakage between the layers and the photoreceptive cells, the cone cells and whatever rod cells are there start to die, start to degenerate. So we have fewer photoreceptive cells so that high acuity becomes lost. And of course, if it's only affecting the macula, then this is only affecting the central vision and the peripheral vision is, is unaffected. So there's going to be um, a loss of the ability to see fine detail, to do fine work, to read, um, to see detail in people's faces uh, and things like that. If you look at the, the fundus of the eye with an ophthalmoscope and you look at those structures we've been talking about you'll see in the retina you'll see white spots drusen uh, and those drusen are signs of the retina um, the parts of the retina degenerating okay so those are the major structures you should be able to recognize when you look at the fundus of the eye through an ophthalmoscope I think um, and those are the terms and what they mean for me that's, that's kind of really helpful for me because I don't, like I said, I don't look at the back of the eye very much. So remembering those key bits gets me started. Um, so hopefully that's been useful for you too. Okay, right. See you guys next time.